Hello everyone. In this video, I will share my learnings which I have gained from industry experience in energy metering field. Today's topic is selection of microcontrollers for designing of a single phase energy meter. So let's start with this. Okay, guys, here we go. I have written the things in advance to save the time. So as today topic is selection of microcontrollers, the selection of microcontroller is majorly uh, based on the two categories. One is the technical aspects, one is and the other one is on commercial grounds. So commercial ground means it's a part of a management site where the it is required to decide about its price. What's the price of the microcontroller? This can be vary from 40 cents to one dollar or to up to 1.5 dollar for a single phase meter. And the second is the on shelf or the long term availability. For example, if we choose the X vendor, so that vendor will uh, able to supply that microcontroller for after X years, because in energy metering field, normally uh, uh, you need to give the warranty of meter for minimum five years and maybe it can go up to the 10 years. The third aspect is it's the lead time. Lead time means that uh, once you order the microcontrollers, uh, right, so vendor uh, will supply in how much time? Maybe it is, will take four weeks, six weeks or eight weeks. So that is a one more aspect which need to be considered by the management. And the fourth one is the tender specification limitations. This means that uh, some tender says, uh, uh, metering energy metering tender says that, okay, you need to use the microcontroller or the measurement chip from X companies, for example, Texas Instrumentation, Freescale, Philips, NXP, Maxim, Teridian or, or some other companies, right? So this is a one part is the commercial aspects. And in the technical category, there are many much more aspects and points which I will share you, I will discuss with you in the next slide. Before going to the next slide here, I would like to share you that uh, uh, this is also a part of a bit part of a technical aspects. It's our second point is the type of a single phase meter. Uh, what does it mean that uh, the type of a single phase meter will be will tell us okay uh, this controller is suitable for uh, this kind of a meter. So majorly the single phase meter is divided into these categories. One is the counter meter or this is called actually a sub meter and it is basically not supplied to the utility. It is, is uh, just used by the local market. And the second one is comes into the multi-function single phase meter. And this again, it is divided into two categories. It's a DLMS meter or a non DLMS meter, right? And here again, there are much more categories in the multi-function single phase meter. For example, whether it is an optical IRDA meter or its current rating, etc, etc. We will discuss this thing later. And the third major category is the prepaid meter. Whether your single phase meter is a prepaid meter or simple meter. And the fourth one category is the smart meter. Uh, so if your single phase meter is a smart meter, then the specifications of a microcontroller is totally different. Right. As of now, in the Indian market scenario, the major market share is dominated by the multifunction single phase meter, where it may be a DLMS meter or it is a non DLMS meter. So, uh, so for a further discussion purpose, I will take this example multifunction single phase meter. And based on this, I will tell you the different technical aspects which is required to select the microcontroller. In this screen, I have covered the two topics. One is the first one where it is categorized into two parts, technical and commercial. Second one is the type of a single phase meter majorly. And the third one is the microcontrollers used in single phase meter. As of now in the industry, these are the common microcontrollers used uh, in design of a single phase multimeter, which is a multifunction meter or a DLMS or non DLMS meter. So first one is a popular controller is from the Texas instrumentation and it's a MSP 430 or Blick 427. It's a part number. Second one is from maximum company and it is 71M6541. Third one is from analog devices 
uh, it is AD mu C832 or a 812 variant and uh, maybe in the today scenarios there is some latest variants are also there and fourth company is the Renesas company and uh, uh, through this Renesas company one is the uh, RL78 series microcontroller is used in the energy metering field and this is a one more microcontroller from Renesas RF521258 S this is simply a microcontroller and this needs to be used along with the ASIC chip. ASIC chip, uh, I mean to say that the chip which measures it's the uh, metrology part or the voltage and currents are the uh, analog signals. Right, so that chip is 54663 and it is from Cyrus company. And uh, the fifth company is the Atmel company and uh, it's uh, uh, commonly microcontroller used is 89C52 with again with the ASIC chip and this ASIC chip is from SAMES company and there are much more microcontrollers so uh, from ST company from Freescale company and so on. So just here it's a brief about the things okay these are the commonly microcontroller used in the energy meters and the different uh, manufacturers uses as per their choice or the requirement based on tenders etc thing. Apart from these companies, some other companies are also uh, supplies a microcontroller for uh, single phase metering application. For example, one company name is Prolofic chip, second one is the Vengo chipset and there are few more companies which supplies the microcontrollers for this application. So okay guys, let's move to the next slide. In next slide, I will cover all the technical aspects which is required to select the microcontroller for a single phase energy meter and please watch this video till end because that slide is going to be much more interesting and, and definitely will add value to your knowledge. So okay guys here we go for the next slide maybe you can have a look. Ha, my writing is not so much good please bear with that. Okay, the topic is technical considerations to select a microcontroller for single phase meter and uh, we are considering a case uh, where we are using the multifunction meter which can be DLMS or a non-DLMS meter. So the first important aspect to uh, for selection of any microcontroller in this particular application area is the ADC. So, here we need to check about the what's the resolution of the ADC and what kind of a ADC we are going to use that. So normally uh, in today's scenario we are using the 16 bit sigma delta ADC or successive approximation ADC to meet the uh, energy metering standards where accuracy uh, within, uh, within a range of 1% is required for single phase meter. So later we will discuss about uh, in detail uh, the theory of ADC and how it is worked and how it is used to measure the voltage currents and other analog signals and to drive the metrology that I will cover in my next session and also the metering standards I will cover in my next sessions. So please don't worry about that. Then second point is the power consumption of a microcontroller in the normal mode of working and also in the sleep mode of working. Uh, why it is important? Because the one point is uh, as per the metering specifications, it says that uh, your meter should consume the power within this much range. The other point is that uh, uh, sometimes your meter need to run under the battery mode conditions because as you know that in Indian scenario number of times means uh, your power can go and at that condition your meter operates on the uh, uh, operates in the battery mode and there are some more other technical aspects uh, uh, for example uh, there is a one tempering feature called neuter missing feature in that mode uh, you need to run the meter at a very low power mode so there are other few more aspects uh, in the metering uh, which forces us to choose a microcontroller which consume the as much as possible minimum power. The typical range is that in the sleep mode it should consume around 4 microamperes or less than that 
and in a normal running mode where it is measuring uh, the all the analog uh, signals and plus uh, doing all the job it should be between 3 to 4 milliamperes max current uh, and the power consumption of uh, your uh, MCU is also governed by the its clock of the MCU so this is also one more parameter third point is the LCD driver segment pins uh, this means that uh, uh, there are two ways to drive the LCD. One is via through the I2C, uh, but it's a expensive way to drive the LCD. The other way is that microcontroller uh, says that, okay, I have uh, X pins which can drive your LCD segments. So normally it depends on the tender specifications, whether you need uh, this much pins are suffice or not, or whether more pins are required. Uh, uh, to take care of all the icons or all the display requirements as per the tender specification. So this is a one more parameter, third important parameter, uh, which uh, needs to uh, which needs to be considered while selecting the microcontroller as per the tender specification or the general requirement. The fourth parameter is a standard one, like its uh, ROM. How much is the ROM, RAM and its flash? A normal multifunction single phase meter, 32 KB of ROM is sufficient. But if you are going for a DLMS meter, then of course the ROM size is required is much more. Maybe it is 64 KB or more than of that. And if I talk about the RAM part, RAM part in that case, 1 to 2 KB of RAM is sufficient. Normally this flash is used to store the uh, metering calibration constants. Uh, secondly, to store the RTC calibration some constants. Third one is the manufacturing specific details and so on. So that's why it is required to have a flash uh, uh, either in the uh, complete meter or maybe it can be inside your microcontroller. The fifth part is the uh, what are the peripherals uh, supported by the microcontroller? SPI, I2C, UART and other IO ports along with the timers and interrupts. So normally in a single phase meter uh, design, uh, one thing is the SPI port is required to connect the external flash if it is required or to drive some other peripheral. And I2C bus is used to connect the E square ROM or to drive the LCD. The UART part is required uh, to communicate with the meter and uh, this UART can be connected to your optical port or via RDA port. In case of a IRDA port, uh, uh, if, you, if it is required to support the IRDA functionality, then microcontroller should have uh, some kind of a PWM mechanism means that feature is also required. So, and uh, there are some other input output ports. Other input output ports are used for the push button kind of a functionality to scroll the display. Uh, now here whether you need a single button or a two button uh, kind of a stuff. So it depends on the requirement of the again the tender specifications where it says ki, okay two buttons are required to scroll the display and we also need a one more uh, port sensing for uh, to sense the cover open of the meter and other stuff so here io parts uh, is uh, again depends on the your tender specifications okay this much io part is sufficient and plus timers and other interrupts are required for normal functionality of the meter or to implement this functionality the sixth important aspect is the real rtc plus watchdog and the power supervisory control. So in the metering domain, it says that ki, okay, your RTC can be drift up to plus minus three minutes per year, right? So here, either you can build your own RTC in the microcontroller and some microcontroller says, okay, I am providing that this RTC, it's an inbuilt feature and it is having accuracy of this much. Of course, uh, again, you need to calibrate the RTC as per the temperature. That's uh, other software algorithms, other things which I will cover in my later lectures. 
The second aspect is the wash talk. Uh, some microcontrollers gives this uh, functionality. Uh, the inbuilt okay, it's a wash talk timer, and some microcontrollers. Uh, uh, in some microcontrollers, you need to implement uh, via firmware or software. The th uh, third one aspect is a uh, important aspect. Uh, it is called the power supervisory control. Means that uh, if your uh, uh, overall uh, voltage of the um, meter is uh, uh, dropped from a certain value, then it will be active and it will give an indication uh, to the firmware to log the things and to take a corresponding action okay now number seventh one is the technical support from the microcontroller vendor and what are the tools uh, the availability of tools and the price of tools uh, and uh, like that so some microcontroller vendors uh, uh, says okay we are uh, uh, we are providing you a, a sample single phase metering code and uh, you can take that code as a baseline and uh, proceed it further as per your tender specifications. So, uh, uh, so overall this is also important aspect because this uh, speed ups the work. And the uh, last point is the MCU operating voltage. Again, uh, uh, it's a, like <coughs> your microcontroller is operating at which voltage. Maybe uh, if it is uh, as low, means if it is working from 2.45 volts to 3.6 volts, then it is good for a developer uh, to play with the firmware and to incorporate the more functionality into the microcontroller related to the power related issues. So, okay guys, I have covered the most of the points uh, which is required to study. Uh, before selection of any microcontroller for your single phase energy meter and in this some points are common which can be used uh, to select the microcontroller for other embedded applications. Uh, so okay guys here I am going to conclude once again the key factors which is required to select the microcontroller for any embedded application. Uh, the number one aspect is the commercial aspect where you need to look at the price of the microcontroller and its availability lead time. Second part is the technical aspects where the key specifications of the microcontroller plays a role to select it for your application. In my coming videos I will cover all the technical aspects of energy meter related to its design whether it is related to its specifications or the mechanical design or the firmware design or related to the BCS software design. So please stay tuned with me and I hope that the shared information is useful to you and if you like this so then please share it, subscribe it and like my videos. Thank you very much and have a nice day.